Hello, Dr. Olson. My name is Janet Ward, and this is my video record of um, my three hour retreat. And I became a Christian during the first couple of months. So, right just before I turned 21, I accepted the Lord. And so I went to a school, three month school called um, Discipleship Training Program and then six weeks or two months of outreach um, we went um, and did a play in churches and different community centers up and down the east coast and uh, ministered and then somebody would give their testimony and um, <clears throat> an altar call and then when that was over i continued in ywam and went to a school of evangelism which had the same format um, so three months of Bible study and learning, and then two months um, putting it into practice. And after that school, um, we went to Guatemala and El Salvador and um, gave our testimonies and led worship and, ex you know, invited people to accept um, Jesus into their heart and become Christians. And on that trip, we, we did a couple of short plays, but we also, um, one thing I remember vividly is working in a hospital where uh, there were cots, rows and rows of just cribs with babies in them who were listless, and um, two or three nurses to take care of them, and um, if they didn't have a family member who could stay with the baby in the hospital, then the baby may or may not be fed or held during the day because there weren't enough um, nurses or hospital staff to take care of them. And so we did um, acts of service like that. We gave out Bibles and um, with an interpreter. We uh, There were a couple people on our team who could speak Spanish fluently. Um, we gave our testimonies and prayed with people. Um, from there, I I was a dedicated Christian woman. I tried, failed a lot, but tried to um, have my quiet time every day. And I went to church twice a week, brought my children up um, in the church and going to um, youth group or, or whatever age appropriate class there was for them on Wednesday nights. And um, keeping the Lord's commandments in my heart and speaking to them like the Bible says when I'm walking along the way or when I'm sitting in my house. So my, my kids have grown up to be um, believers in, in Jesus and strong Christians. And then three years ago my husband fell in love with his assistant who was 25 and everything came crashing down and I decided that God was at fault and he should have warned me because I was in prayer, listening, thought I was listening, I probably wasn't, um, trying to live a godly life and then this, this devastating thing happened to me. So three years ago, I, in my heart, pulled away from God. I stopped having my quiet time. I um, still went to church, but not as frequently. And um, my husband was a worship leader and I was on the worship team, so that all came to a crashing halt. I backed away from all involvement in any ministries. I was on the women's ministry team. Um, anyway, just to let you know where I started, where in my heart and in my relationship with God, starting this class, um, I wasn't in a very good place. However, I have continued to live my life um, following the um, principles and laws of the Bible. I mean, I, I didn't go out and start <laughs> coveting and um, committing adultery or, you know, anything like that, except for um, keeping the Sabbath holy. I kind of was acting like a baby in that for that commandment. So I switched to GC, uh, CCU um, because I wanted more of a biblical and Christian um, integration in my classwork because that's how I want to live when I'm when I'm done with my master's program. How am I going to put the biblical principles into practice when I'm um, counseling in a secular world? So I, I know I, I wanted that, but I still wasn't having my quiet time or praying or just so upset at God 
even I'm still married to my husband and we've worked through a lot of it. I, I know I have, um, <clears throat> I know I have a ways to go, but our family is still intact and um, my husband did everything anyone could ever ask him to do to clean up the mess he made. Um, anyway, so I, I kind of kicked, kicked against doing the spiritual disciplines when I started this class. However, I did it. And the more I read face to face, I found my heart softening. I found myself longing for the wisdom and the truth that God has given us in the Bible. And without, I was just reading the scriptures and contemplating them. I wasn't praying. I was just reading them, contemplating them, moving on to the next section. And by doing that, um, I began to soften toward God and to be, and began to accept um, things friends would say to me about the Bible and God's, what God says. Um, so that, that was um, very surprising to me because I thought I had just shut down uh, forever. That wasn't true. Um, and there's a scripture, I should probably look it up, but it's about um, God's word never coming back void. And um, I saw that happen as I started reading face to face, that it wasn't doing nothing. We're just reading the Bible was doing something. So <clears throat> that's how I came into my three hour um, retreat. First thing I did, because we were told to gather our, our um, books from the class, is I, I opened up Sacred Pathways and I started reading through it again. And um, I hadn't done this before, but I put all three of my um, pathways together, which are intellectual, sensate, and activist. The author um, talks about his three and how he sort of made a prescription for what would um, benefit him and how he can grow and the ways that he he um, responds to different types of quiet time. So I'm I started to do that a bit, and it was it was pretty exciting. And then I read a chapter that I hadn't read before, which is on contemplation, and realized my husband is a contemplator. It is nothing that I would find beneficial for myself, although um, I'm open to doing these things. Um, but uh, I wrote down a couple of books to read further. Um, but one of the things that, I mean, a lot of the things I'm reading, yes, that's him. But one of the things is he, um, he really appreciates the mystical and mysterious side of God. And um, he, one of the, one of the downfalls or um, trip ups for, for contemplate, people who are contempl contemplative are, um, having experiences just for experience sake. And that kind of, um, in my mind, thought of when he was experienced that in love feeling with this woman at work, he didn't have an affair. She wasn't interested. It was all in his mind, but he was experiencing something for the sake of experiencing it. I don't think he thought about it further, like what's going to happen to my family or what am I doing? It's just that this experience was so exciting to him. And um, it just um, let me know that the experiences, like he'll say things like, we bought this house because we got married in 202 and I felt it was a sign from God that we got lot 2002. And our marriage and family are going to be okay. Um, things like that, I'm like, mm, I don't know, really. But those things are very important to him and I feel like I need to... Um, enter into the celebrations, the creativity. He's a musician and an artist. He creates, and that's part of what contemplatives are. And um, it kind of clashes with my intellectualism and my thirst for the truth and the principles. Um, when he's, you know, wanting to celebrate um, some something that God has done or talk about a dream that he believes God has given him. So that to me was an epiphany and I believe it will help me in going forward in my marriage. Um, so those two things were, were great. I wrote down a whole bunch of books um, when I was 
in the intellectuals chapter um, that I'm going to uh, make mere Christianity I have so I'm gonna start reading that and just start feeding myself in the way that my God the ways God has made me to be will um, give me a more fruitful quiet time and a more fruitful walk with God if I um, learn from these books and it's okay if I if I want to know something I don't just sitting there and contemplating isn't um, isn't something that uh, comes easily to me after the two hour mark almost exactly the two hour mark I started to get fidgety and antsy trying to bring my mind back so I got up made myself a cup of coffee and got a keto cookie got two and um, I picked up face to face and in the back it's over there in the back there's a topical um, list of all the scriptures that are in the first part of the book so I opened it to and I was convicted this is kind of mystical when you kind of do your finger and find a scripture and that's what God's saying to you but it really felt like um, not something I wanted to hear but something that um, God was saying to me in Ephesians 6 and Colossians 3 22 slaves obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart just as you would obey Christ obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you but as slaves of Christ doing the will of God from your heart and Colossians 3 22 to 24 says basically the same thing and I have had um, some issues with some of the mandates and the um, the laws and with um, some companies requiring vaccinations and um, I've done a bunch of research and uh, saying that you're following the science and following the science aren't necessarily the same thing so and plus my maybe it's pride I don't know but I'm I don't want that kind of government it's the government for the people by the people it's not some scientist somewhere telling us we can't leave our house so anyway I have an issue with that and then when I've read the scripture about <laughs> obey your earthly masters in face to face it says something like um, obey those who are in th or who are in authority over you and so I thought maybe I'm not a freedom fighter if I don't wear a mask or refuse to get a vaccine maybe I'm just doing something that God doesn't want me to do which is obeying my um, the authority over me I'm not working right now so I don't have to get a vaccine I don't have to wear a mask if I don't want to but um, I'm convicted that God maybe is telling me that I need to um, have more respect for those put in authority over me I started just thinking about all the people in my life I just got back from giving my sister respite she watches my mom well my mom lives with her my mom has Alzheimer's so I was down there and and my two of my sister's kids are in abusive relationships and every she has six kids three of them have been married they're all divorced single parents and going through a lot one of them actually had a psychotic break and was calling herself uh, Yeshua and so my sister's going through a lot so as I'm coming across scriptures I'm thinking of texting her and <laughs> she she was thinking that my husband and I and her husband and her could go on a cruise together and I'm like yeah but we don't like cruises so what about a ride? and I'm thinking of all these things I read a scripture and I'm like I gotta tell Jessica and I've read about um, creeds and how good creeds are for intellectuals and I'm like I gotta tell Jonathan my nephew and I gotta see how Jessica's doing my Jess Jessica's my daughter who is pregnant with a baby who was has trisomy 18 and it she's her body is not compatible with life is how they put it so she's struggling right now knowing that she has a baby baby alive in her who's not gonna survive so then I was reading about Hannah and Samuel no oh, maybe I should give her that scripture and I'm usually just it's usually text Jessica Jessica here's a Bible verse text Leslie Leslie what about her it's like constant 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 but I I didn't do any of that I just wrote it down and moved forward and it felt pretty good but I had like this 
It's like I, after two hours, that was it. I couldn't concentrate anymore. And what I was reading, I wasn't just taking in for me. I was thinking, yeah, give it to them. Yeah, give it to her. Yeah, give it to her. Um, so I think I need a bit more practice with um, shutting down my electronics and um, maybe not having to be in constant communication with everybody in my life. Uh, so it was a really good exercise, and I believe that God um, spoke to me. Oh, and it's not like I am never in silence or solitude because I read a lot of novels. During COVID, I read 24 novels, and that's a lot of time in silence and solitude, but it wasn't transformative. Um, the book, The Way of the Heart, talks about, you know, solitude isn't just being by yourself and silence isn't just silence. It's the type of solitude, silence, and prayer that transform your heart. So um, I felt a bit convicted about that, too. <clears throat> the one, one other interesting thing was that I've been offered a, a job with, I, I could work part-time, but it's... Um, in a field where it would look good on my resume. And um, I keep worrying about it, like they're gonna take this opportunity away if I don't make a decision. And But I need to be there for my daughter in case she goes into labor. She's, the baby's probably gonna be stillborn, but if not, the baby's gonna die right away. So I need to be there and I can't make a commitment. And I'm worrying about worrying about it. That didn't come up at all in the three hours. I didn't worry about it at all. As a matter of fact, I wasn't anxious about anything. Um, so that was, it was rather peaceful. <clears throat> so that was my experience with the retreat. I spent it, this is my bedroom. I don't think you can see my bed. This is my bed. But it's also my faux office when I'm on calls. Um, and my husband wasn't home and my son's on the other side of the house playing video games. So it was rather peaceful. And I uh, thank you and Colorado Christian University for... Uh, re giving me the tools and the information, the truth to, that's um, transforming my heart and renewing my love and my relationship with God.